Okay, so this is just a quick video to show you the process we're going to use today to draw your still lifes. They should have a good idea of what's sat in front of you now because we've done our drawing warm-ups. Um, and the very first step is to use our piece of paper and this time we're going to use the whole piece to lightly just sketch out a very rough outline. Now, I've got a piece of white paper because I think that's what most people would be able to find. If you've got a piece that is a light tone like that that would also be really good because a lot of the work then when you stick pieces of white paper on or use a white pencil they'll show up really well if you haven't got that you could start off with a large piece of this is just brown paper or wrapping paper to make your background okay but I'm going to start off with the white because I think that's what most people will have and I'm going to sketch out very quickly I'll probably end up speeding this bit up um, what my still life looks like. Now, obviously, my still life's in front of me, so I've taken a photograph so you can see what I'm looking at, if that makes sense. Right, I'll speed this bit up. I hope you can see I'm using sketchy lines and I'm using some of the ideas we were looking at before like the shape here is squashed and here, but also I'm letting some of it just happen. Like we looked in those examples, a little bit of wonkiness, a little bit of character. That's okay, especially today when we're working in mixed media like this. It might just become a Bob Ross happy accident. Sometimes the things we think are going all wrong, we're better to just let them happen and use them. Okay, so I'm going to put a rough ball in there for the onion and I can see that's not really lining up very well with the edge of my board so I probably need to extend that a bit. A rough shape in there for the onion. I can see that my base is quite round under there and that tucks behind and a rough shape there for the apple. Okay, so there's my very rough shape that stuck out. And the idea is that we're going to think very much about what tones we've got in our papers or textures that might match um, what's going on in the picture. So I can see here I've got this nice stripy, it's quite shiny, I'm worried about drawing on it later, but I quite like the stripes. And I can see these little ridges here in my picture. So I'm thinking I'm not going to use scissors. You can if you want to, but try just experimenting. I'm going to try and see maybe if where that light catches the light there that might work really well on my jug and I'm going to try and tear it so it goes around my onion okay so I might end up with that bit there can you see I've not lined it up with the edge of the jug I'm going to quite happily draw over that that's fine um, I'm going to have a play around with a few other pieces I've got a very very dark I've got loads of different pieces of paper I've got some from junk mail some plain ones this is a bit of origami paper it's very patterned inside of envelopes they're my favorite with those patterns on um, I've got an old bit of a book I've got all sorts loads and loads there's even a bit of um, an old um, workbook of Oscars brown envelopes they're great anything so look at the tones and the patterns in your paper and think you know where would that not necessarily what color it is but where is something that light and this is quite a good mid-tone and actually I think it's a very old piece of paper it's sort of got water stains and wrinkles on it um, and I think I might use that just to kind of go across here where I can see that jug and that onion might join together there so you're going to experiment like this for some time, remembering that you're going to draw your drawing over the top of lots of these pieces of paper. So you can make them big, you can make them small, it's totally up to you. Experiment. Stick them down only when you're happy with them. Um, although again, it won't be the end of the world if they're stuck down. We can draw over them, we can stick something else over the top of them. Okay, so I'm going to get on with that bit. I'm going to pick out some definite dark bits for the shadows under here. 
and maybe for the pencils and then I'll show you what we'll do next. So I could have got going, it's up to you, and you can keep working backwards and forwards with this technique until you get something you like. Some of these bits are sticking up a little. Again, it won't really matter. Um, and now I've got a really large selection of random, because I didn't know what you'd have in your house, random things. I've got felt tips, I've got crayons, I've got a biro, I have got an eyeliner. <laughs> I've also got some wax crayons that are as old as my child, about 15 years old, a normal drawing pencil, all sorts of things, even a highlighter pen, which actually I will go in with second. So the idea is now you go back to your drawing and you start adding in where you can see those shapes and the textures. Remember when we were um, using our lines to follow the shape, I can see almost those lines coming out of the apple here. And I think, well, my red biro is not too dark. It's probably perfect for that kind of tone. And I can start adding in some sketch lines. Hello. Keep looking round. Uh. See where else on the picture might also have that tone. I'm just going to quickly outline some of the things that have disappeared as well when I've stuck the paper over. So the edge of the jug disappeared, didn't it? And the kind of nice thing about a biro is you can't rub it out. So you may just have to work with everything that goes on. Yeah, so can you see I've started adding some of that in there. I really like the idea of using a highlighter today. It will give real brightness and colour so I'm going to use it where I can see a real highlight there. And perhaps down the edge of my yellow pencil there as well. Even just on the edge of the white one. Okay, so start looking all over. Where will that tone, where will that texture work? You can also experiment with colouring on pieces of paper before you put them down, or you can also start making a little key at the side of your paper of what things are going to look like. What will it look like if I do some red pen in a hatching design over that? What kind of tone will I get there? What will it look like if I use some charcoal to darken this paper? Before I tear it and put it on for a dark area. So you really do have free reign to start building up your picture. That would look nice there, I think, because I've just worked on that dark spot. Um, I'm going to keep working this up a bit and so you can watch it speed up and we'll have a look at the end. You can start working along, ask me any questions you like, have a go. Okay, so you can see how this is going to go. At the moment, I'm feeling really happy with my apple. Mm, okay with that bit of the jug. That bit of jug, I think I need to put something lighter in, but I do have some chalk. I do have some white paper I can rip up and add another layer on. Struggling a bit there where that kept getting unstuck, but I'm going to leave that area alone now and let it stick down. And I don't feel like my onions got properly round yet, so I'll probably work a lot more on that. But you can see how you can start to build up a picture. 
it's something nice because it's made up from ripped paper and things we don't really care about. You don't have to be too precious about it. But remember to have your own style. I have a very scribbly way of drawing. I always have had and I'm quite happy with the mess. If you like to be more precise, be more precise. Be yourself. But keep experimenting. Remember, you can experiment on the corner of your page. That's absolutely fine. Or have a spare bit of paper. You can try creating different shades by using different strokes different textures what can you do can you go over in many directions can you get darker and darker remember to really look at your picture where it's really dark it will be really dark you should have a whole range of tones right from black all the way to white okay and I'm also not using colors although they work well on the apple actually is the right colors I'm not necessarily picking colors for their shade I'm not saying a yellow thing must be yellow I'm picking them for their value their tone so if I think something needs a bright light tone I'll pick a bright light color and that can help as well help um, mix it up a bit more make it more interesting okay well have fun I'm going to work on this I will show you at the end when we all put our gallery together bye <laughs>